And the next phase of the life cycle is design and implementation. And in this one, what we're doing is we're taking our initial SRS and now we're doing some uh, conceptual design, which means we have to think about what technology, what devices are we going to use. And we have to create a justification for the use of those devices. And as we shall see, 1511 allows us two methods and two methods only for selection of equipment. One is to use IEC 61508 certified devices for the relevant SIL that have been issued by an accredited, credible agency so that the safety numbers, the failure rates are reliable, we can use those. And the second is through a prior use justification. And again, when we get into the, this part of the course, we will go into these requirements in more detail. But right now, those are the only two methods we can use. Because I like the equipment, not acceptable. We have to have a properly justifiable reason for using this equipment. And here again, what we're doing is we're making sure we think about and cover the systematic requirements. And I've used that word again, systematic. I will then talk about systematic a bit later on. So once we've done that, we have selected our equipment, then we need to think about how we're going to test it as well. And we, think about, we need to think about the architecture for the design. Are we going to be using redundant components or not? Are we going to be doing online testing or not. So all of that needs to be considered. And you'll notice on the left hand side manufacturer's safety manual. One of the things I like to joke about with a class and get them to remember is to use the term read the flaming manual, RTFM, because the safety manual contains specific information regarding the application of the device for the particular sill level. So what does that mean? Well, the safety manual will have all the, the failure rates, number one. Number two, it will tell you uh, or give you a suggested proof test to achieve a certain coverage factor and it will give you a suggested frequency. The other thing it will do is it will also give you a useful life. How, off, how long will this device be able to be used in service before you have to change it. It will also have any limitations on application for the sill. So the other thing you have to be wary of when you look at equipment is the word capable. So for example, if it says this logic solver is capable of sill 2, you have to understand what does that mean. So, for example, it might mean that the logic solver, in order to be able to achieve SIL2, you need to have two of them and they have to be configured in a certain way to be able to achieve SIL2. Because if you don't do that, and we actually had a case where a client came to us and asked us to do a SIL verification for um, the design and it needed to be SIL2. And the logic solver he'd chosen, we knew you needed two of them. And when we looked at it, he only had one. So we said, well, there's no point in us doing the SIL verification because it's going to fail, because you've only got one logic solver. And he said, well, it's, it's SIL2 capable. I said, yes, SIL2 capable, but you've got to have two of them to meet SIL2. So make sure you have the safety manual. 1508 says the manufacturer has to have a safety manual. It doesn't necessarily mean that he has to give it to you for free. 1508 doesn't say that. So you, what you might find is some suppliers may charge you for certain sections of the safety manual uh, if it's programmable, for example. Not all of them do that, but, but some of them might do that. And I know that one or two do. But they have to make a safety manual available. Even if it's a prior use justification, there needs to be a safety manual. Because again, you need to know how you are going to apply 
this device and what, if any, limitations there are. What are the applications? Because you need to make sure that you've got it rated for the right duty. So, for example, with a valve, if it's going to be in clean service or dirty service, if it's going to have something that's highly corrosive running through it, and you don't choose the right valve, well, guess what? Your valve's going to deteriorate fairly rapidly. So it's important to understand that. So once we've gone through that and we've determined how we're going to be able to test it, then we do our SIL verification. And you can see this will be iterative until we meet the requirement. And when we come to talk about SIL verification in the, the 102 course, you'll find that there are three things that we have to meet in order to be compliant with SIL verification. A lot of people think it's just the PFD average if it's low demand. Well, it's not. There are three things. It's either the PFD average or the PFH, if it's high demand or continuous. It is the architectural constraints. So in other words, does it need to be fault tolerant? And it's systematic capability. So the systematic capability is very important. And we've had uh, clients come to us asking us to do SIL verification, but to ignore the systematic, because they haven't used certified devices. And what we then say is, well, in order to be able to do this, you have to give us a written reason as to why we have to ignore the systematic, because it is a requirement if you're going to meet 1511. And then when we finish doing that, we would do a factory acceptance test. Now, interestingly enough, in the 2003 edition of 1511, the factory acceptance test was a highly recommended step. In the 2016, it's now a mandatory step. You have to do it. And it makes sense to do it, because this is the first time you'll bring the logic solver together with the application to do some simulated testing to make sure that you, your SIFs would operate correctly. And at this stage, we would do an FSA 2 to make sure that we have everything we need from this particular phase of the life cycle. So it's, a, it's an independent cross-check. And the word independent is very important when it comes to FSAs because you have to make sure there's no bias and it's a completely independent view. A lot of companies will hire people like us because it's easy to prove the independence.